Vaccine hesitancy remains a significant reason as to why patients are not immunized against preventable diseases. Vaccine hesitancy is influenced by several factors such as lack of confidence and efficacy, complacency, and inconvenience. Some individuals are hesitant to all vaccines and some individuals are hesitant to only specific vaccinations. It is important for us to recognize the difference when talking to someone about vaccines. Discussing the details of a vaccine, such as evidence supporting its efficacy and safety, can help the patient become more well-informed and may encourage them to receive the vaccine. However, certain strategies should be utilized when talking to this patient population to avoid making the patient feel attacked, judged, and singled out, and to ensure the patient maintains the feeling of autonomy. In this video, we will discuss helpful tips when having these conversations with patients. It's important to approach the discussion with a vaccine hesitant patient in a way that makes them feel comfortable and gives them the option to speak freely. You can begin the conversation by asking the patient, what reservations do you have about receiving this vaccine? Or what are some reasons you feel hesitant to receive this vaccine? This will allow you to begin the conversation at the patient's level without making assumptions. If a patient feels that there are assumptions being made about their health literacy or vaccine hesitancy, they may not be willing to have a conversation. Avoiding assumptions also allows you to determine the reasons why the patient is hesitant and can help you decide further talking points when addressing the patient's concerns. When responding to the patient's reservations about receiving a vaccine, reinforce the fact that their concerns are understandable to avoid invalidating their feelings. You can first reply with a reassuring statement such as, I completely understand your concerns and can see why these would make you hesitant to receive this vaccine. Or, these are very reasonable concerns and many individuals have these same reservations when it comes to receiving a vaccine. After ensuring that the patient feels like their concerns have been acknowledged and understood in a way that is non-judgmental, you can then discuss the specific reasons why they are hesitant. If a patient denies vaccination due to factors of inconvenience, such as not wanting to travel to receive multiple doses of a vaccine series, you can inform the patient of ways to make the process easier and less time consuming. When doing this, you'll want to make sure the patient does not feel like the conversation is combative or argumentative. It might be helpful to preface your point with a statement that once again validates their hesitation. For example, you could respond with, it does seem inconvenient to travel here multiple times for your vaccines, especially with vaccines that require multiple doses to complete. However, we can usually administer multiple vaccines in a single visit depending on the type of vaccine. What are your thoughts about this? In this example, the patient was asked their opinion after your suggestion was made. This may be helpful to maintain an open conversation with the patient. If a patient is more concerned with how well a vaccine actually works to protect them or how the side effects of the vaccine could affect them, it may be helpful to inform the patient about some evidence that has been published regarding the effects of the vaccine. In this discussion, it's important to only use evidence-based information from non-biased, credible sources. The Centers for Disease Control, better known as the CDC, can be referenced to prove the efficacy of all vaccines through published studies if the patient is open to having a conversation about this information. It is important to give the patient honest information about the documented adverse effects that could happen. Occurrence rates may also be helpful to share with the patient, especially for more serious side effects that are usually rare and unlikely to occur in the patient. Reassure the patient that all FDA-approved vaccinations are generally well tolerated and that soreness at the injection site, chills, and mild fever are typical side effects that are usually mild and resolve within a few days. However, when discussing this information with the patient, make sure they don't feel as though you are listing facts in attempts to prove them wrong. The patient should feel that their concerns or confusion is understandable. It may be best to ask the patient for permission before giving them information about a vaccine efficacy and safety. For instance, you may say, there are many opinions about vaccines in the media and differing statements published from different sources, which can make everything very confusing. It can be hard to figure out what is the truth and what isn't. I could share some information with you that is backed up by evidence that a lot of people don't know about. Is this something that would interest you? 
If the patient then agrees, you can have a discussion about the evidence we have to support vaccines. To reinforce the need for vaccination, you may want to inform the patient of how vaccines have helped prevent several diseases. For example, you could tell the patient that vaccines have greatly reduced infection risk, hospitalization rates, and the severity of the disease if a person happens to contract it. Vaccines prevent up to 3 million deaths worldwide each year and have reduced some disease rates by 99.9% since their creation. Without seeming like you are scaring the patient or trying to use intimidation tactics, you could emphasize the importance of regular vaccination by stating, if people stop receiving vaccines, these diseases may become more common and rates of infection could increase. Regardless of why the patient is hesitant to receive a vaccine, it's always best to ensure the patient feels that their concerns are valid. The patient should always feel as though they have autonomy in their decisions regarding their health. Towards the end of the encounter, you could reinforce this idea by stating, it is always your choice whether or not to receive a vaccine. I just want to make sure you have all the information before making your decision. If the patient remains adamant about not wanting to receive a vaccine, let them know that they can always return if they change their mind and that you'd be happy to administer their vaccine. Together, we can help reduce the burden of vaccine-preventable diseases in our communities. For more information, please visit the A Shot for Alabama webpage at ashotforalabama.com.